of it. Okay, so let's get started. Welcome everybody. This is Jennifer Landon, a broker and owner of Landon Realty Group, accompanied by Cassie Meadbone, one of our senior agents here at Landon Realty Group. We are doing a Zoom seminar today for sellers. And while it might be unusual to think why do sellers need information in, in a market like this, because they obviously are driving the market with low inventory, they don't have to do much in order to sell their home. There are a lot of things that need to be considered before you list. Um, and we're going to touch on those today and how important it is to align yourself with an agent that knows what they're doing because it's the market is moving so fast and there is a lot of liability in selling that people don't even realize. So welcome to the show. Cassie, you want to say hi and tell everybody about yourself and, and um, all the listings that you handle all the time? Sure. Um, so I'm Casimira Nebone, it says here, that is my full name, but I go by Cassie. Um, I have been doing real estate for the last eight years. I um, live in Burbank. I've got two small kids, so um, they go to Burbank Public Schools. I have all kinds of um, information about school districts and local schools and local areas, but I work primarily in um, the Burbank, Glendale Valley, East Side communities. Yes, and Cassie, I'm going to toot her horn, handles a lot of clients that are selling their home and moving up, which is a really tricky transaction. She's really good at it, and she's really good at getting her clients multiple offers. So she's going to Thank touch you. on Yes, it's true. So she's going to touch on that um, in our slideshow, because even in this market, a home can sit if it is not priced correctly, and the importance of having leverage in the deal. Um, I'm Jennifer Landon. I am a broker and also a real estate appraisal. Uh, appraiser. I've done this since, uh, been in real estate since 1999 and have spanned property management to sales to appraisals. So done a little bit of all of it and happy to share all that information with you guys today. So let's get started. Okay, so a couple of things we want to touch on first is, as most people know, demand is strong, and that is because inventory is low and interest rates are also low. This creates a frenzied market where there's not enough houses for the people that want them. Um, it, we've had the largest number of home sales in the last 15 years in 2021, uh, that is for across uh, the United States. Um, and demand is not expected to slow down in 2022 either. Uh, the mortgage finance forecast published last week calls for existing home sales to reach 6.4 million homes this year. So the, if you were thinking at the time was right, um, the answer would be yes. Do you agree, Cassie? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, um, a lot of people have been talking about how interest rates are going to be going up this year and uh, saying that they are. Um, but I think that it is important just to keep um, everything in check and, and have a reality check for, they're still extremely low. People are upset that they're getting interest rates in the mid threes. That is still a terrific interest rate. And having interest rates in the twos that we've had in the last two years um, is really not normal. So I think that that's something um, just to be aware of because a lot of sellers are probably going to be buyers too. So when you're looking at it, um, just to, to keep everything, um, you know, everything is relative, but that's still a great rate. What a great point you just made. A lot of sellers are buyers, whether they are empty nesters and they're moving to a smaller home or they're moving to a bigger home because they have more children. The likelihood is once you own a home, you don't want to really ever be a renter again. <clears throat> Doesn't make financial sense. So I love that you brought that up. So just know that as you're selling your home, you will be on the flip side of the coin at one point and to uh, be sensitive to those buyers out there because they they're, they're having a little rough right now. <laughs> Great time to be a seller, a little hard to be a buyer, but not impossible. You just have to be aligned with the right people. And again, this comes back to a supply and demand issue. And just so you know, uh, the quote unquote healthy market has about six months supply, which means that a house would normally be marketed anywhere from three to six months before it was sold. Um, now, I think we anticipate if the property is on the market more than 30 days and it's not under contract, it's 
either not being marketed properly or it is way overpriced. Uh, would you agree with that, Cassie? Yeah, I mean, in the areas that I work in right now, like if someone sends me something that's been on the market for two weeks, then I assume there's something wrong with it. <laughs> um, that the price is too high, that there's something weird that's not being shown in the photos. It's really um, houses that are um, presented well and priced well typically sell within a week these days. And I agree. And another quick tip for any buyers that might be listening in is don't discount those properties that maybe have a little bit more time on the market. A lot of um, what we're seeing now is that with the intensity that you have to have into getting under contract, um, a lot of buyers are just throwing everything at a seller and they're getting the property wrapped up and then they get uh, buyer's remorse or cold feet and they finally have a minute to decompress from the frenzy of the, the offer process and then they might cancel escrow within a week which might make the house look like it's on the market longer than it um, really is and then can be revisited so um, we're seeing homes go under contract and falling out uh, usually within the first week to 10 days that they go under contract because of the fact that buyers don't really get to do it uh, any due diligence before they just have to make an offer and do it after so keep that in mind um and i think I and I, sorry and i think no please. It, it is really interesting to see like how a hot home something that has had a ton of interest can become very cold very fast i actually got mm -hmm. a um got my clients into a house this summer um that had fallen out of escrow and then the the sellers were really like chasing offers after that they had had I think they said five offers to start. They were well over asking. They went back, everyone backed out and we ended up getting a great price on the house. And everyone says, how did you do that? It, it fell out of escrow and it got cold fast. And it was a fantastic house. See, so that's another example of how as a seller, you need to be aware and, and maybe not rush through that offer process, um, even though you do have the leverage of uh, low supply on your side. So great. I love all this feedback. All right. Let's see what's next that we have here. Here's a, a little graph for you from Keeping Current Matters. They do a lot of um, data and this is sourced from the national association of realtors it's inventory of homes hits record low and i think we all understand the the scarcity rules the market um you know if there's only two of those air jordan tennis shoes uh the price of them are going to go very high versus <laughs> versus the one that everyone can get at target the knockoffs right they're just not priced as much um they're, you know, they're not going to drive the market so what's really driving the market in addition to the low interest rates is the fact that that inventory is low. And I think that there is a motivation underneath it all that was spurred by all this COVID madness that we've had in the last few years where people, you know, they want to move and be in the location that they care more about or closer to family. So they're making that move. Would, do you see that, Cassie? Yeah, absolutely. One thing that I think is interesting about this too, and um, and I predicted this when interest rates started going down because we've really had low interest rates for the last 10 years, really since the market crash in 2007, interest rates have been low. Um, and I kind of well, saw this coming that, that we were going to have low inventory because when you have such a low interest rate, people are not really encouraged to sell. Um, so I, I have a couple of clients who own properties now and they're looking to just buy additional properties instead of selling their properties because they're like, yeah, we got it for a good price and we've got a great interest rate. Why would we sell it? Um, so so it's it's interesting to see this, the, this chart here that, you know, in 2007 to 2011, that we had much more um, inventory than we do now and prices are much higher than they were. That is a great point. It kind of creates this trap right, where it allows people to hold on to their existing homes, and with rents being high, you know, their mortgage is more than covered, they're making some money. Also, we find it's a trap, too, for people that want to move uh, into maybe a smaller home, but then they get stuck because they're equity rich, and then yet they're going to be trading the price of their home for a smaller home at the same price. And they're like, well, it doesn't make sense unless they're going out of 
the state and can transfer that and save some money. So it, it's, it can cause problems. It seems like it would be great that inventory is depressed and seller, seller's market seems like a good thing, but actually an unbalanced market either way is really not good for anybody long term. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, we'll go to our next slide here. <clears throat> So, uh, you know, it is true, sellers do have maximum leverage right now. Um, this is what we're talking about and leverage when we, um, meaning they control the, the deal in a way that they get to call out a lot of terms and they can say no. And the buyers have to basically accept it. Um, uh, and some things are harder to get buyers to accept, but Overall, they do control the deal. Would you agree with that, Cassie? A lot of listing agents out there have gotten that ego attitude too. <laughs> they yeah, and and I would say more and more buyers are waiving contingencies. There, I, I would say that waiving appraisal contingency has been very, very common uh, for the last few years. Like it's kind of just a given on competitive homes that um, buyers are going to have to waive co appraisal contingencies. But even just in the last year, I've seen where. Um, buyers are waiving loan contingencies, they're waiving their inspection contingencies. Um, on the last listing I had, the buyer came in completely non-contingent. So um, once we accepted, they had zero opportunity to walk away. And that was a very compelling offer. Um, but it's also hard for other buyers to need that. That You have to have um, really great confidence um, in the deal and in the home and in your finances to be able to do that. So it does make it tough, um, but it's very appealing for sellers right now to basically be able to say like I'll sign this and it's a done deal from this point on yeah it's really it, it's it's tough for buyers to compete some buyers to compete with that for sure all right so next we have uh the buyers know they need to be flexible negotiators to have competitive offers competitive sales prices possible closing date potential lease back to the seller meaning that the seller gets to close escrow take his money or take her money and then stay in the home for a certain amount of time while they figure out a relocation um also um the waiving of contingencies this being able to say no we're not going to fix that or it's as is it's gotten tighter and tighter and it's putting a lot more pressure on lenders and buyers to uh really do their homework and due diligence up front i think cassie you even had recently or nancy had recently shared with me that you did some inspections prior to even getting an offer accepted can you talk about that a little bit yeah, so because it's very competitive right now, um, and my client wanted to be able to go in um, uh, with no contingencies to make his offer competitive, we did pre-inspections on a home. Not every agent will do it, um, will let you do it, but um, this agent on this house my client wanted to offer on said, sure. So we went and did a home inspection. Um, we did a sewer inspection. Um, the downside to that for the buyer, I know sellers, um, <laughs> Uh, topic here, but the downside for the buyer is that then if your offer doesn't get accepted, you're out that money. Um, but it was actually really um, interesting. And, and the house came up with a few things. Um, some, it needed a new roof. There was some retaining wall issues. There were some things and my client actually ended up not offering as a result of that. Wow. Um, but, but for him, he said, great, money well spent. <laughs> now I know. And I feel good about walking away. Well, but if you think about it, if he did get the offer accepted, he would have moved forward with those items anyways. So mm -hmm. if he, so in a way, yes, it, the risk is not getting your offer accepted, but if he would have canceled based on those items, then it didn't, wouldn't matter. So, yeah. so good. That was a great strategy. And it kept the buyer in the position of um, actually calling the shots at that point saying, this is more than I want to do. So mm -hmm. great. The house ended up getting 17 offers anyway. So when I called <laughs> the agent and said we weren't offering, she was like, fine. <laughs> so. Oh gosh. And did you give the seller a copy of any of those reports? Because they have to disclose them. No. And that was the um that was the agreement that I had with the listing agent before. She said, You can do this. I don't want to hear a word yeah. about any inspection and how yeah. it turned out. So I Got said it. agreed. And I didn't tell her anything. Got it. Got it. Okay, great. Um, so our next slide. Our internet, it looks a little slow. Is it stuck? There we go. <laughs> so the bottom line, um, 
is this our last slide or is this the next one? Okay, so if you're, it, this is an optimal time for sellers, that is the body line. And with that, we want to talk about some tips on what you do when you do get ready to sell, because there is a lot of things that people don't think about. It's not uh, just as easy as throwing this uh, listing and some photos up on the MLS. There's a lot of disclosures that need to happen in the state of California. We're a very litigious state. Um, we do not use attorneys for uh, um, the sale process. We actually use escrow. And so it falls upon your agent to make sure that you're in compliance and to shield you from any liability. So we're going to talk about some of those items now. So the sale prep. So I'm going to turn this over to Cassie and let her talk about how she does some of her sale prep. Yeah, so this is less about, you know, all the disclosures and more about just getting the house ready to sell. Because one thing I think, you know, sellers here like, oh, it's a seller's market. Everything we just talked about. I don't have to do anything. I'll just put a sign up front of my house and it'll sell for $100,000 over asking. Um, and while it may sell, if you just put a sign in your yard, there's a lot of little things that you can do um, to get your house ready to sell that will make a really big difference. Um, so one thing that I always say is, if at all possible, I always recommend to have the house vacant, um, and meaning that you're not living there anymore. Um, I know that that's not always possible for everyone, but I think just being on the buyer's agent side, sometimes I much prefer to show um, vacant houses. Um, it makes it easier to schedule appointments, makes it easier to get in there. Um, also just with COVID right now, like, do you want all these people walking through your house while you're still living there, looking in your cabinetry, being in your closets? Um, and I just think that the house shows a lot better. Um, then just some things like, I think that having a fresh coat of paint makes a huge difference in the house. And if you're not living there, it's much easier to paint the house. If you've been there for a year or something, maybe it doesn't, but like I've lived in my house for eight years with two kids and a dog and a cat, like I would absolutely need to paint my house from top to bottom. Um, I think also that small details matter. I'm a big proponent of this. I think that doing things like changing out light fixtures and changing door handles and faucets and doing small things. I always try to change shower heads. People notice <laughs> nice shower heads. <laughs> um, so on the listing I just had, we did this. We changed every single light fixture in the house um, and like a, a number of other little things I talked about. I think we spent less than a thousand dollars and it made a huge difference. Lighting is really my big thing. Lighting is something that is very easy to change. It's inexpensive and it really shows the, the age of the house. Um, it, a lot of lighting does not age very well. And if you can put modern lighting in, it just up levels everything. Um, I think also having a professional deep cleaning. Sometimes people think, oh, I'll just paint myself. Um, I just had two people come for 11 hours to a vacant house that I had and they got inside everything. And it cost like, 500 bucks to have them there um, and just everything was sparkling. They do the windows, they do things you're not gonna wanna do. So um, we have vendors for all these things. I have cleaning companies, I have painters, I have handymen, I have electricians, we have all of these um, people, landscapers, that's the other thing. It's gonna talk about is like refreshing your landscaping and that can be, um, you can spend thousands of dollars, you can spend a couple hundred dollars, you can put in some new flowers in the front, you can mulch, um, but just you want people to be able to envision themselves there in your home, which also goes to staging. That's where you have someone come in when the house is vacant, um, and rather than just walking into an empty house and trying to have people envision where their things would go, you put beautiful furniture and beautiful accessories, and you try to make people imagine themselves being there. And it really works, especially, I just had this listing in Glendale, it was a beautiful home, um, but the difference between it being clean and empty and painted, um, and it looked great, but that staging just was absolutely made a huge difference. And so that's something that typically the seller will pay for, and it costs in the range of the five to $10,000 range, which I know can be a tough pill to swallow for some sellers, but you will get that money back. It is a it's a good investment to make um, in the house. So overall, you know, all of these things, like it doesn't have to be a ton of money, but you will absolutely make the money back. And it makes a big difference between being something that like people don't really want to spend much time in your house. They just want to walk through. They, if, they're, if they're in your things and in your space, you know, they don't, they can't envision themselves there. Um, 
So I, I highly recommend doing all of these things. I agree with everything that you have on your list. And, you know, to take it one step further, a vacant house is easier to show. Um, you know, the stress of having to always have your house ready, it can wear on you, especially if you do have um, kids or animals. Um, the deep cleaning, I can't even tell you, so many people do think that they're gonna clean. It's so much to do, it's overwhelming. It's not even worth it. It is worth the money. Um, and as far as the landscaping and the staging, I concur as well. You know, people, whether you like it or not, are going to curb appraise your home. They are first going to look online. So they're gonna look at all those photos and the staging that was done and what it looks like. And then they're gonna drive by and then they'll decide if they're gonna go in. And if the front is not welcoming, and instead if it's pushing them away because it is, it's darker, it's drearier, there's a lot of broken things, they won't come in and the inside be completely different. So these are huge things that you can do, small things that have huge dividends. So great list, Cassie. I and I list. think also like I had a client recently who she she didn't she was like let's just sell it while we're still here. And I highly advise them not to. We did all these things and I honestly think the house sold for easily $300,000 more than it would have otherwise. So they spent, they did staging and they they needed to do some work. There was some major, they had some contractors there for a couple of weeks, but I think they spent about $25,000 and they made $300,000 easily, if not 400,000 from wow. what they would have sold it had they been living there. I'm confident uh, in that number. I, I'm, I'm not surprised. And in, in a market like this, where what you put into it, you know that you're going to get back of all markets, this is the safest market to invest in your home. Um, you know, if we're in a declining market, it might be a different conversation, but we're not right now. So, so sellers are safe with that. Um, so Cassie, I mean, I feel like you have so many clients that um, are stepping up into either a bigger home or downsizing and they have equity in their home and they need to tap into it in order to buy. So how, how do you help them buy before selling? So this is something that like, um, you know, you might be thinking vacant house. Okay, great. Where am I supposed to go? What am I supposed to do? I need the money from my house to buy my other house. So one thing um, is a bridge loan. So we have a number of lenders who we work with who are able to provide this service where if you know that you want to buy a bigger house, buy a small house, whatever it may be, but you need the, the equity from your current house, you can get a bridge loan, which gives you um, a loan for the down payment on the future house. And it makes it so that you don't have to write your offer contingent upon the sale of your current house. Because in today's market, we just sold a house, we had 51 offers. If there had been one that was contingent upon the sale of a house, and it wasn't even an escrow, like that offer doesn't even get looked at. That gets thrown away. So if you don't want to have your offer just get thrown away, um, you can write your offer non-contingent, use the bridge loan to put the down payment down, move out, move into the new house, do everything you need to do that we were just talking about, change your light fixtures, paint, clean, do everything, put your house on the market. And then when your house sells, then you can pay back the bridge loans. So these are typically short-term loans. They're like six months or less. Um, they do have a little bit higher of an interest rate, but it's still nominal. It's like 5% um, currently. Who knows where it will go, but currently it's in that range. Um, and it's something that's really a great tool for people who are looking to buy a house um, before they sell their current house without having it not contingent. I have had, um, without having contingent um, on the sale of your house, I've had a number of clients in the last few years who have done this um, and it's really been a great option for them and they've all moved out before <laughs> fixed their house up and they've all been hot homes who we got um, really strong offers for yes i am a big proponent of bridge loans as well and i always encourage my sellers that are using their equity to purchase to investigate it um and a quick story on this i had a listing um the seller owned the home free and clear and that she was using almost every penny of the equity to purchase a home out of state um she had decided not to use the bridge loan and wanted to sell while she was in the home i couldn't talk her into it well we did wind up getting a cash buyer however the buyer could not perform right at the close of escrow believe it or not it's basically was a complete nightmare situation and she was supposed to close within a week 
for her other property. So she was um, going to be in breach of contract with her other property, risk losing it. Everything was falling apart. We were able to secure her a bridge loan to close on her other property. And um, I immediately then resold her house and we were able to close. But the bridge loan saved it. And if she had just done it to begin with, it probably would have been a lot less stressful and easier for me to show the property. So, um, you know, the little bit of cost, the stress that it removes is monumental. And a lot of people underestimate how hard it's going to be to prep your home for sale, buy a new one, move, get it ready. It's a lot. Um, so I say, give yourself the gift if you um, have the ability to do so. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. All right, let's see what we have next. So um, I think that's all we have today. So any final tips, Cassie, that you have for sellers right now? I think just the big thing is, yeah, I mean, it's a great time to be a seller. If you can jump on it now, um, interest rates are going up and there is some question about how buyers are going to respond to that. So I think that if you're on the fence, like now's a great time. We don't know what the future is going to hold, um, but we do know that now is great. Um, but don't fall into the trap of just thinking it's a great time to sell. I'm not going to clean my room. <laughs> but you really <laughs> still do need to get your house ready um, and prepare because buyers are savvy right now. And so many people are doing these things to make their homes look better that if you don't, it really stands out in a bad way. So, um, and it's not, it's not that hard. I know that it can feel overwhelming. Um, and the client that I just worked with, she was very overwhelmed through the whole process, but we're there for you. I was there painting paint samples on the wall to determine which color. I personally ordered all of the light fixtures for this house. Like we're there for you to help and we're the experts. So we know like this is a more modern light, light fixture than what you have now. And even though you may love that light fixture, take our advice and <laughs> listen <laughs> to what we have to say. <laughs> Let us help you. The other thing I would say, you know, if you have multiple properties, now is the time to probably transfer that investment into something a little different. Um, I know a lot of people think, oh, I own this home. I lived in it. I bought a new one. I'm going to rent it. I hate to tell you this as an appraiser. I can tell you that having a single family home as an investment tool is probably your worst investment because you're, um, you're really subject to that one tenant. That's why uh, 10, 15, 20, 20 plus units are actually a more stable long-term investment because if you lose a tenant that isn't paying you rent, you still have um, all the others that are. So if, if you are uh, sitting on property that you're renting or you're airbnb and you're kind of tired of it, um, now is a good time to 1031 exchange it, which means that you can keep your, um, you don't have any capital gains and you can transfer it and, and put all those funds together and buy something that is going to be a more stable, longer term solution that um, you can even hire a property management company to manage. And then you can not just get your check every month and go on vacation. Um, so just a food for thought out there for any sellers that have multiple properties properties that are trying to decide what to do, um, that is a great option. So be sure to reach out to us. We'd be happy to sit down and help you find a good investment tool for your single family homes. If you have one that's um, sitting there and ready to max out the equity. So, all right, well, that's it. Thanks for coming. And we are Landon Realty Group. I'm Jennifer Landon. This was Cassie Kneebone and we can be, uh, found on Instagram or any of the social media sources that is your favorite. And until um, next time, see you soon. Thanks. Bye. Bye.